Access main program. Access main security. Access main program grid. Ah, ah, ah. You didn't say the magic word. Please! God damn it! I hate this hacker crap! Hi, welcome back to the channel. This is part two of the harmonic drive mount build. We've already rebuilt the harmonic drives as good as we can, re greased them, and soldered up a controller. In this video, we're going to flash the firmware, hook the stepper motors up, and see if we can get Nina to make the steppers move. Let's go for it. Okay, we're ready to flash some firmware, so let's learn how to do it. So, first thing you'll want is a USB cable that's actually a data cable, not just a not just a charging cable. So we'll be using that. We're going to flash a Wi-Fi chip, which is a Wemos D1, and we'll flash the ESP32 controller. So to start out, you need to install the Arduino IDE. And it looks like this. You need to make sure that there's ESP32 support installed. So we can go to File, Preferences. And under Additional Boards Manager, make sure that you have a URL for ESP8266. You can find this URL in the OnStep Wiki. If you need to support more boards, just make sure that there's a comma between the URLs. Then using the Library Manager, it'll show you all the different libraries that you can install. I'll install the library for my real-time clock. So we type in Kuna. We can go down here. And we click install. I've already got it installed. You can see I installed 2.3.5. There are other libraries that you can install. On the OnStep Wiki, it says to install 2.3.5. And now I need, also need to install the libraries for my stepper drivers, which is the TMC 2209. Not in the Wiki, it tells you to only download it from a one link. So we download a zip file, install a zip file, you can go to Sketch, Include Library, Add Zip Library. We go to Download, and we can see that there's a TMC 2209-main.zip. You would click open and it will install that library. You might notice I'm actually using Windows today. I have this laptop set up just for running the Arduino stuff and running tests. So the next thing we would do would be to download the source code. That is on step X. 10.18 is the latest one as of this video. I've also downloaded the smart web server source code. So you unzip those two files and I've put them inside documents Arduino. So I have this is the OnStepX source code, renamed the directory OnStepX, and I also have the smart web server. Next, we need to find out all of the information that we'll need to input into the into the config.h file. So for that, we have the OnStep online calculator spreadsheet. We'll open that. All we do here is enter things on the green lines. So I have a 400 step stepper, 32 micro steps. My GR1 will be my pulley ratio which I have 120 tooth pulley and it's 20 tooth pulley. So that's six to one. So I put six in there on both of them. 
and my harmonic drives are 100 to 1, so we put 100 there. Right now I'll just leave my slew rate bass desired at 1. If I decide I want a faster slew rate, I would change that. And then that gives you all of the information you need to put into the config.h file with your axis steps per degree, your axis steps per worm rotation, and it gives you your tracking resolution. And that's the information we'll need. So now we go into Arduino on step X, and open up the on step X.ino file. It should open up the Arduino IDE. You probably always get these down here because we've installed older libraries. And now we just go to the config.h tab and edit this file with the information that we got from the online calculator. We change our pin map to max ESP4. That's the board we're using. A lot of this stuff we can just leave as default. The axis driver model, we'll put in the TMC 2209. And the axis step per degree, that's from the online calculator. 32 steps for the micro steps. And just from asking questions on the mailing list, I found that I want to set my driver I run to 800. With these stepper drivers, you don't have to adjust the pot the way you did with the older ones. You can do it from software. So on axis two, I do the same thing. So that axis one and axis two will be the RA and DAC. Make sure that your mount type is set to gym. So it's an equatorial mount. Time and location, I have to put in DS3231, that's my real-time clock. And last we're doing right now is uh, steps per worm rotation, 76800. Okay, so we are going to close out of this right now because first thing we'll do is flash the smart web server, which is the Wemos D1 chip. So we'll open that INO file. So there will be a config.h file for this one too. Now you want to flash this one off the board. Take it off. And you notice that there's a USB port on the inside here. Plug that into our cable. Plug the USB port into there. See the see it's activated. Now I'll have to make sure that it's connected in the IDE. You can see here it's not connected. Probably the wrong COM port right at the moment. So in Windows we'll just look at device manager. And then go to ports and see what COM port it is. It is COM port 7. So We'll come up here, go to Tools, Com Port, 7. There, and now we see that we're connected down here. So all we have to do to upload the firmware is click Upload. We'll compile a sketch. We'll probably fast forward through this and then watch it upload. And there we have it. We are done. Okay, now we'll unplug that. Put it back on the board the right way. Okay. 
and now we upload the firmware for this so we go to on step x open up the on step ino file again and we have the config.h file that will already be ready for us that we did earlier And we'll plug this in. Okay. And it's looking for something on COM5. It looks like this one's on COM5. So we just hit upload to this too. So we just click upload, same, same, compile sketch. This is a lot bigger sketch, so it, so it does take a while to compile. That rhymes. Okay, that took a good five minutes to compile and 15 seconds to upload, so that is it. We are done. Now we move on to hooking up some stepper motors and giving it a test run. Here we are at my ghetto test bench. Steppers are plugged into the controller. I have a switch soldered on, 24 volts going to the controller and to the RA stepper motor brake. So it is unbraked right at the moment. The on-step instructions say, always have the board powered up before you plug in the USB port. So we'll turn that on. Let it boot up for a second. This is the Wi-Fi chip. As soon as that goes solid, it will be connected to my internal network, I hopefully. Plug this in. Okay, we have a solid light, so hopefully that means it's connected. So first thing we want to do is we'll open up a web browser. Hopefully it will connect. And there we go. And I'll show you the things I've done here. First we go to the mount tab. We can see that the time are synchronized right here. In order to do that, you go to the settings here. And you can see where it says UTC offset. That defaults at zero. And so your time will be off on the controller and the laptop. So that will make your acquisition software complain and moan. So my UTC offset here in Utah is seven the mountain standard time and that will sync these two up and I have a real-time clock on mine it's battery backed up if you don't have that on your controller you can always click set date and time here and that will sync your controller with the laptop and here we can see we can actually control the mount home unpark park for some reason it's not parked right now so we'll park it We'll have to figure out what the deal is on that. Here's your guiding buttons, just like on a hand controller. You can do a lot of stuff with this controller, but I'm just doing the basic stuff right now to see if it's up and running. Under network, the default password is password. And default, it comes up in access point mode with an 
SSID of OnStep. Password is password. So you would just open up a web browser and go to 192.168.0.1 and this smart web server will come up. But I have opted to have it connect to my home network so I can get to it from any web browser in my house. So I unchecked enable access point mode and enable station mode. And I also put DHCP because I want to have my DHCP server give it an address. Or you can give it a static address if you don't click that. You put in your SSID. This is just my IoT network because that's the only 2.4 network I have at my house. And you put in your password. You hit upload. And then you have to reboot the controller and then come up and connect if all goes well. So that's the smart web server. Now we'll go into Nina and let's see if we can connect. We'll go to telescope. We have the OnStep telescope. That is a ASCOM driver that you can just download and install in ASCOM. And then it should show up as one of your choices. Connect. And we have success. Let's see if we can make it move. Go to imaging. I'll just choose a Deneb's good. And if I click slew to target, stepper driver should move. And we have success. And you can see. Under telescope for the right ascension, declination, altitude, azimuth, they're all moving towards. We should. And theoretically, that should be Deneb. Okay, so if we go back to equipment. See our tracking rate set to side reel. These two switches, if your mount, when you're testing it and your mount goes the opposite way it should, when you slew to a star, you can just click these on, on or off. And that should be for your RA and deck axis so you can get it to move the right way. Or in the firmware, as I said, you can change it there too when you upload new firmware. All right, let's hit park, see if it goes back to where it was. Actually, first though, if you look at my RA axis, you can see it just barely moving. So it is tracking, so, so that's good. All right, let's hit park. And there they go. All right, it is parked. So I call that a successful test. Now on to actually prototyping the actual mount. Okay, that should be all for today. Part three is going to be hopefully prototyping the mount case out of plywood to get everything ready to so I'll know exactly how much aluminum to buy. And if we're fast enough, we'll start fabricating the aluminum, getting everything ready to go together. Unfortunately, I was not able to get a pretty picture to show you this time. The weather is, how should we say, been suboptimal for astrophotography. I'm sure a lot of you can relate. It seems to be that way for a lot of people. But if you're enjoying this content, like the video, that helps subscribe if you haven't and I'll talk to you later and as always clouds suck.